to other video games to the max, and I want to thank uh, Josh Walshul for letting us uh, use that song, of course, in our intro. And this is the 401 Mania official video game zone podcast, and I am your host, Sean Garmer, and this is episode 126, if we count all the iterations of what this podcast has been, and joining me a little bit pained uh, this week... My usual call is Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. And since uh, Mark is in a painful state, I decided to ask around and uh, was able to uh, secure a uh, wonderful guest we've had on before, uh, most notably during our E3 stuff last year from the uh, Backlog Busting Project and also Full One Games and Writer as well, Mr. Randy Isbell. Well, I don't know about wonderful, but uh, I'm glad to be here. Why, uh, I was, uh, adjectives were not running into my brain at that moment. Uh, so, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, Randy's also on the, the football to the max show with me. If you, if for some reason there's some crossover there, uh, if you didn't know that, well, now you do. So, Mark, I mean, was your, uh, wisdom tea thing, uh, too bad or? How'd that go? Uh, it was painful at the time. I feel okay now. It just doesn't feel quite like correct. <laughs> I mean, this, I'm sure that that just feels uh, weird not having teeth there that were there before. Or? Yeah, I'm not touching it at all. I'm not until a few more days go by. <laughs> well, Randy, uh, you know, why don't you uh, sort of let people know, you know, maybe there's people that are listening have no idea who you are. Let, let people uh, know about you. I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people don't know who, who I am, but that's okay. But uh, uh, I uh, co-host a podcast myself, uh, BacklogBusting.com. We do what's called the Backlog, Backlog Busting Project, where we can't speak English there either. So uh, get used <laughs> to that. But um, we basically, Wes and I will play three games, uh, one where both of us will play and then one that each of us will play ourselves. And it's just our way of going through games that, I mean, it's happened to all of us. You, you, there's so many games out there that you're going to miss some, or you're going to play a bit of one and then a new game will come out and then you'll just put it away and forget about it and never finish it. This project is kind of our excuse to go back and play all these games that, you know, either we never played before or played so far and never finished. So uh, we, we've come across some amazing classics that we just weren't able to touch and some real duds that we wish we never looked at. But it, either way, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you can find uh, the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever there are podcasts. And also, if you subscribe to that W2 Network, you can get where, you know, you can get this podcast. You can also get the backlog busting project as well. So, um, more a reason to, uh, subscribe either way, but, uh, let's get on to what you guys are here for us to talk about. But before we get into the news, um, Randy, you know, last week, uh, Mark talked about Uncharted 4, but Randy has actually gone through and finished the whole game. And you're telling me game of the year already. Oh yeah. I, 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 I will say this. I was calling Game of the Year two years in advance. I, I am a huge Uncharted fanboy and will not hide it. So I just knew that this game was not going to disappoint me at all. And I was going to hype it up to a whole nother level. But I will say, after completing this game, I, I need to go back and play it another time or two and, and kind of delve into it a bit more. But the storytelling in Uncharted 4 is probably the best in the series. And that's why I love the Uncharted series is the story. So that makes this game probably right up there with 2. I think the gameplay elements that were put into Uncharted 2 were a bit better. Um, but just the way that they, they delve into the story. And the, obviously this is now the fifth time you have been with Nathan Drake if you played the Vita game as well. And... And to kind of finish off his story is amazing, and they did an incredible job with it. And it's tough for me to see any other game this year kind of hit me the way this one did. There may be games that are funner to play, 
as far as the mechanics? Are they going to bring in new things that Uncharted just hasn't done? Uh, and so I understand that there will be far more possibly worthy Game of the Year candidates, but this one will probably have the most impact for me in 2016. What do you think? Uh, you think that that's going to be the Game of the Year when we're doing that that whole voting process too, Mark? Or uh, of course not, because the Game of the Year just came out. Uh, I think today or maybe yesterday and it's called home front the revolution <laughs> <laughs> no Good i'm sure. on like i'm on like chapter 12 or 13 of uncharted 4 uh i just did that stupid i just did the uh like chasing sam like jumping from truck to truck sequence uh i like the story i just the gameplay just isn't quite hitching up for me for some reason like i enjoy the shooting but I die, like, too often just with finicky controls. And it almost feels like... It actually feels like I'm playing, like, a worse Assassin's Creed game. Which is, like, bizarre to me. Like, don't get me wrong, the game looks beautiful. I like all the in-jokes. Uh, I like the character work and all that stuff. But th- just the gameplay it just feels very, like, basic. Hmm. What do you think, Randy? You... No, I'm with them as, as far as the simplicity of some of the the controls and stuff. And I'll ask you, Mark, uh, are, have you followed the Uncharted series? Have you played all of them up until this no, one? No, I played the first one, and I played the second one for 10 minutes, and then I had to stop. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, that's where I can completely understand. I mean, if you played all of the Uncharted games, this fits like a glove. I mean, you've gotten used to the way Uncharted feels, the way... Nathan Drake moves around his environment. So, I mean, if you've played games like Assassin's Creed, where your character and most of those will can control a lot differently, um, I totally get it. I, th- I think that the climbing ability is a lot better in Assassin's Creed than Uncharted. And the, the sneaking mechanics in Uncharted 4, though they've improved it from other iterations of the series, still is, is pretty basic. I, I was a little disappointed that after The Last of Us, where you know you could throw items and distract enemies, that they didn't move that into this game. Or, so, or have like a silent weapon. Yeah, I, but I think the way they they looked at it, it was just going to make it too easy. Like if, if you had, they had a silent weapon in three, they had a crossbow that you could use, or maybe it's two. I'm mixing my games. Uh, but anyways, it, it kind of made those sneaking missions too easy for me. So I liked it because uh, the what thing I like about Uncharted, especially these last couple games, is they set you in a situation and go, okay, there are multiple ways that you can go about this. You can just have a gunfight if you want, but our enemies are smart enough to know that you can't just hide behind one wall. Where I mean, we're going to flesh you out and you're going to have to run around. Or you can take your time and slowly sneak around and take out each one silently. Or in Uncharted 4, the thing that they've added is you can just completely bypass it. I mean, if you know where the exit is, and you can get there without being seen, you can skip that whole part in in several parts of this game. So, it again, like there are other games that do things better in different aspects. I mean, if you really look at it, but Uncharted as a whole, I think is the total package as far as the sneaking and the climbing and, and the gun shooting and the cinematic moments. And that's where really it is for me with Uncharted is is the way it, it, it feels like you're playing a movie more like any other game. And, and people that do know me know that I I really enjoy like these big kind of games for the story, not as much the gameplay. I'm, I'm a platformer at heart. So that's that's the gameplay where I really get into it. You give me a good platformer, and I could really tell you the ins and outs of it. But when you get into these kind of like AAA titles, give me a good story, and I'll play anything. That's fair. Uh, I've still not played any of those games. I have all three on the PS3. I just have to. Uh, the PS3 is also in the living room where everybody else watches TV. So it's not always easy to watch or play things on that console. Um, if I had money, I would buy that 
uh, the PS4 collection, but I don't know. I just kind of feel like it was a waste of me to go get the PS3 games if I go and buy the, the PS4 collection, too. I don't know. The one thing I do like about it is the multiplayer. Have you played a lot of that? I That's the one thing I have not touched, actually. Uh, so the game came out Tuesday. Uh, I, well, I got it a little bit early because of the way Amazon works. And I actually skipped the football podcast so I could be playing Uncharted. And I played, what, the 14-hour game all like Monday night and all of Tuesday and got it done like Wednesday morning. And then uh, the girlfriend and I went on vacation that weekend. So I haven't been able to get back into Uncharted because I have uh, the games I have to play for the podcast. So uh, the multiplayer is something I'm going to get into a lot more. Uh, but I have yet to actually get into it yet. Yeah, aside from the screwy currency system, that's actually the one thing I really like about the game so far. Like, so what's really great about it? Just... It's just fun to gun down people and team up with other players. And I mean, those mechanics work well when you're not trying to, like, jump around or, you know, dodge, or you know, do like, specific platforming stuff. When you're just trying to gun down people, it's works as intended. Especially the especially the uh, like uh, special powers you get. Well, there you go. At least uh, seems uh, like you get more to look forward to there than just yeah the single player. But uh, all right, I think uh, I know you have uh, been you're going you're reviewing or are in the process of writing the review for uh, Walking Dead Michonne. I've only played the first episode, Mark. You played all three now. Yeah, I banged it out in the middle night. <laughs> well, those games are not known for being long. Well, especially this one. This one, you can get through every episode in about an hour and a half, two hours, if you really try. I might do that tomorrow, and the for the other two. But you were telling me the story's not as good, or? Well, the game gives you no context for who Michonne is. So unless you watch the TV show or read the comics, you're kind of screwed. Uh, she's kind of a meandering character, I find in the in the in the game at least. The villains are terrible. Uh, yeah, it's just very kind of cookie cutter and throwaway. Like it's just, it's not needed at all. Yeah, I mean they kind of do sort of go with that that this is mainly meant for Michonne fans or people that really, you know, are are big into her. Um. Just from playing that first episode, the uh, yeah, I totally agree with you on the villains. Just, <laughs> I'm like, wow, we're really going with this. Just people that are bad. Okay. Yeah. I would say if like if it's for Michonne fans, they should have got the the actress who plays Michonne to do the voice work. <laughs> I guess maybe trying to save money there. But I mean, they probably made money off of the other games that. Shouldn't yeah. be too much for her to do, but you know, whatever. I guess they wanted to. So if it does well and they do it again, they don't want to have to keep paying her. Whatever their reasoning is, I'm sure that they probably didn't expect for it to be this huge hit or anything. So, and it hasn't been so good on them. <laughs> but so let's get into uh, the little bit of news that there is. I mean, a lot of the news that's concerning. The entertainment world is really the TV upfronts and all the shows being canceled and what's being renewed and what's going to be on there for next season and whatever. Um, there is going to be an Exorcist show and a Lethal Weapon show. So those shows we talked about before, Mark, they're going to be on TV next year. Um, so they can get canceled pretty quickly, probably. But... Uh, probably, I guess, the most uh, forward-focusing news that came out, uh, which is uh, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guimont uh, coming out and discussing sort of what they expect for console gaming to be in the future. He does believe there will be another generation of consoles, uh, even with the mid-tier cycle that we know we're at least getting from Sony uh Microsoft's been coy about what they're doing, even though there's uh, other information that shows that they are working on something at least. 
he says that he believes in streaming, even though it demands a lot of bandwidth. Uh, we think it's going to grow. Obviously, today uh, they probably can't do it yet, but uh, in the future, that will be. He believes that'll be the way that we consume games. No consoles, just having a streaming device and they I guess they put the games digitally on there. What do you do you think that that's possible? We just don't have a console and after the next generation and they just digitally put games on this thing that is universal that you buy. Uh Randy, what do you think? Oh, I was let, I was let Mark do it. I'm, I'm oh. the guest, but but listen I don't think it's going to be next generation. I think this is is a down the line thing. I think, I mean, I'm I'm sure they want it to be next generation, but there's so many moving parts that have to fall into place to make that work. Uh, I remember what was that called? PlayStation Now. Yeah. Their streaming service. I, I don't know how it is now, but I remember signing up for the the beta of that, and the internet where I live was able to stream the game okay, but I would run into constant like um, input delay at times, um, which obviously will make some games completely unplayable. Um, so, I mean, obviously it's going to, if they make it all streaming, it's going to basically be based on how the internet works. So if the entire world can get, you know, fiber wire and everyone can have super fast internet, Streaming might actually be the way to go. It'd be it would cut a lot or cut a lot of cost, and you know be beneficial. I think for everybody, but I just don't think technology is quite set up that way just yet. There are certain areas that it would work out great, and I think you're going to see a lot more streaming possibilities with the the next gen or, or whatever they have planned for that. But I don't think it's going to be streaming only yet. I think we're, we're going to ease our way into that. I think we're uh, exactly the same thing. Like until Comcast gets over their stranglehold over cable internet, like there's no way they can do this because you have bandwidth caps. And imagine if you had to stream every game, like, well, I have streaming. to pay for an unlimited bandwidth. Yeah, camp. but yeah. imagine trying to stream Uncharted 4 to your PS4 or your PS5. It's like, no way. So until every, at least 90% of homes have internet and we're not even there at all yet, there's no way this can happen. And I think companies think that like every every uh, homeowner is like in Seattle or they have like gigabit Google Fiber or stuff like that. And it's like, no a majority of people who even have high-speed internet still have crappy high-speed internet compared to even, like, Google Fiber or even countries like England or France and stuff like that. So there's no way this can happen, at least until 20 years from now. Yeah, and you that's if you're hoping at that point that we've gotten to a better state where, at least in the United States, they have Google Fiber everywhere and everybody has that opportunity to have that sort of same high speed internet or or very yeah. high speed internet <laughs> but then what do you do about the rest of the world you just go well you, i would assume ex- that the whole world would advance with that i mean not not the whole world obviously there's going to be poor countries that are still going to be in that state i'm sure 20 years from now hopefully not but you know and for those people that, for those people there's an xbox 360 waiting for them <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so there's a or or even a Xbox One, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I think this is a nice pipe dream. Um, I just don't believe that Sony and Microsoft are just going to bow out and not have their names attached to something either. I just see them, if the thing is profitable, why are you not continuing to make it? Even if we do have more of these upgrade things throughout the life of these consoles. Um, I can... I wouldn't mind an all-streaming future. I just don't want to have to use Uplay to do it. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> just please don't... Yeah, don't give us crazy launchers, Ubisoft. Because you, you're, you're a big Steam fan, aren't you, Randy? I play Steam a little bit. I'm not a huge PC gamer, but... I, I'm one of those guys that... Like, like streaming is cool and, and, and all that, but... 
I'm a baby collector. I'm, I, my collection is not ridiculous, but I like collecting, having the physical copy in my hand. So 20 years from now when everything's streaming and you don't get anything hard copy, it, I'll, I'll be a little sad, but but it makes sense and it would it clears clutter it it saves cost it's it's less garbage that a lot of other people throw away so i i get it but i like to have the physical copy i don't download a lot of games unless unless they don't come out in a physical copy i i'm i'm of the position that i go the cheapest route possible so mm-hmm. if it's cheaper physical i'll buy it there if it's cheaper digital i'll just get it there and go that way <laughs> yeah, most like if I go through my my Steam collection, which I know is nowhere near where you're at, because again, I, I more play console gaming and more old school console gaming really than anything else. But I would say probably ninety to ninety for five percent of the games that I own on Steam were during Steam sales, and come the end of June, early July, I'm sure a few more games will add to that list. Well, I mean, that's probably a lot of people's yeah. why their collections are that big. Is you wait till the stuff's on sale, mm-hmm. and that's when you get it. I mean, it's the same thing with me. Probably that's, eh, I want to say mine's probably more like fifty percent, but still, I do like to sit there and look at the sales and go, well, you know, it's it's five dollars right now. Do I want to go ahead and buy it? And that entices me more than if it's, you know, 10 or 15 or whatever. So, yeah, yeah I, I wait for Steam sales. Then I also get in the dirty world of Russian Steam trading. So, <laughs> I mean, most of my PS3, my PS3 is full to capacity. And that's mostly because of PS Plus or things that are just on sale. And I'm like, oh, five bucks? Let me just get that. Right. That's uh, why I bought Final Fantasy X on Steam. <laughs> Oh, yeah, How I much was it, it on Steam? Uh, the official price is twenty four dollars. It's on sale right now. I got it for seventeen, which I feel pretty good about. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, considering it's still. It's two games. So. What if you get the PS four yeah. version? It's still forty, right? I got mine for nine, but yeah. Uh. Oh I well, that... to... I got. I mean, I got mine when it's on sale though. So. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I got you both beat. I, I bought that collection on the Vita because RPGs are perfect on the go. Especially one with unskippable cutscenes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but does the PS does the Vita have an option like the 3DS where you can just kind of pause it, do a yep. pause, shut off? Yeah, if you just hit the top button on that, it'll go into basically the sleep mode that the 3DS has. Ah, okay. So, yeah, see? Mm. There you go. You can just uh, sleep mode the cutscene and just whenever you have time, watch it later. Yeah. But, uh, yes, yeah, a game that I know you are a big fan of, you guys covered it on the Backlot Busting Project, Unravel, mm-hmm. uh, just announced that EA is working with the developer, uh, Coldwood Interactive, to make Unravel 2. So... The uh, big surprise indie thing that EA was working on last E3, now already has a sequel. Yeah, and I'm I'm very much excited for it. Uh, I would like to see what they kind of do with it. I would hope they'd go in a completely different direction and, and add a bunch of twists to it, not just go, okay, you're doing the exact same thing. Here's a Yarny, and here's another mini story. Hopefully they add some extra stuff to it. But I loved what they did with Unravel, where the entire, all the puzzles in it were based off of yarn, and they were all really clever. And it was just short enough where the puzzles didn't really start repeating themselves, where it was like, okay, here we go again enough. Because, I mean, the game's pretty short. So as long as they keep doing that, where each game's like, you know, four to six hours, and it and it tells a wonderful story without saying a word, which is just so amazing to me. And and just kind of let you have some fun platforming goodness. Uh, absolutely, I'll play all the unravels. Do you think we're gonna have a uh, pink yarny? You know, since everything has to be. If you have the male version, you got to have the female version in the next game or something like that. That'll be DLC. <laughs> <laughs> You want no, a pink the, yarny? It's three ninety nine. 
it's it, it's an EA game, so they'll, they'll use the uh, game face from from Fight Night and UFC. <laughs> <laughs> You'll put your own face on the yep on the Yarny. <laughs> Possibly, I, I would not rule that out. Honestly, uh, from from EA at all, uh, or they'll they'll give you a microtransaction ability to to get the Yarny. That will be a, another thing they do there. I, I still have not played the game. Nor have I. Uh, you know, from what Randy says, and then you know the reviews seem pretty mixed. Uh, seems more of a positive thing, but uh, you know. It's on sale. It's nothing revolutionary. It's nothing that's going to blow your socks off. It's a, just a, a very cute story uh, that you kind of go through this old lady's life, basically. And, and But the, the visuals, to me, are right there with Uncharted 4. Like Some of the things that they have been able to do in this game, you just stop and just stare into the background. It's just amazing. I mean, the platforming is pretty basic. Um, but they do a lot with basically a lasso mechanic and that gets kind of clever at the end. But I, I understand how the, like a lot of reviewers go. It was like, well, this is fine because it, it doesn't do anything amazing. And like I said, I, I want to say it's like a four to six hour game. So I, I understand the detractors, but it just, like I said earlier, it just goes right down my alley. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a platformer. You can't really go wrong with it, other than, I guess some people have thought it was oh. like a bit unfair sometimes. Oh, you but. can you can mess up platformers. I'm playing one right now. <laughs> Is it Sonic? It, it's no, it's Mickey. It's Epic Mickey Two. Yeah, uh, that game's a bummer. <laughs> I had high hopes. I played Epic Mickey last year for the podcast and loved the side-scrolling platforming parts of the game. So I went, all right, I will give Epic Mickey 2 a chance. And I've looked up reviews now and realized that I'm playing the worst version of Epic Mickey 2. I'm playing the Wii U version, and I guess they completely screwed up everything. So It's like, not that much better on 360 or PS3. Really. Well, I'm sure it's not good at all, but well, I'm, I'm swallowing it up and trying my best to finish it. But you can mess up platformers. Oh, no, you certainly can. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they all don't make them like, yeah. uh, you know, the Marios and all that. Uh, that being said, uh, Sony did confirm uh, their usual press conference time slot. So that's not anything special. But now we do have the full list of uh, press conferences. And we will try to have uh, immediate reaction shows after these press conferences. Uh, hopefully we'll get to have the whole band back together for most of these. But uh, on Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, or Randy is EA at their EA Play event. So they'll be first this go-around. And then Bethesda will take that night slot. You'll get Microsoft to open Monday morning, as they usually do, at the, that 1230 slot. And then the PC Gaming Show is going to be on right after that. We now know we don't have to watch that show. It was terrible last year. Uh, But we'll also not have to watch it because they decided that unless this is going to be 30 minutes long, uh, they're going to run into Ubisoft's press conference right after that at 3, and then Sony will be the last one at 9. So there'll be a big break between Ubisoft and Sony. Um, And then that's it. No Square Enix. Uh, This time, I guess they learned from last year that can't be boring. Well, uh, you can't give up all of your secrets before your press conference. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, at least we know the full slate. So just uh, Sunday and Monday and then Nintendo will have that Zelda thing. On we can ignore all that. <laughs> Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> on the Tuesday, which well, is going to be just a treehouse with Zelda. So if you're really into that, I guess you'll be watching. Uh, speaking of Sony, though, a French uh, distributor, game distributor, has possibly revealed that the PS Neo 4K is the new code name for this will come out in September, which will be a month before PSVR, which makes total sense because 
this is the way that you want to sell PSVR to people. It's all there. You don't have to go buy this. Uh, or the, the power thing is in there. You don't have to go buy all that separately. You think it really comes out in September? Uh, before the PSVR? Yeah, I mean, as you said, it makes complete sense to to get that ball rolling. And, and honestly, I mean, we're, we're going to get far more details about it at E3, but uh, to me, having this 4.5 or PS Neo 4K now or whatever they're going to call it, works just makes perfect sense as a business standpoint for, for Sony because, listen, they're dominating this generation. They have a new system coming out, you know, the, the PlayStation VR that they would like to, to make happen, but the PS4 can't really handle it. So what do you do? You, you come out with a more souped-up PS4 that can handle this VR stuff. So now you have it come out a month early to kind of set things up, and now... Now that you have this, you can take your PS4, which is all already way outselling the Xbox One, and lower its price way down. So if, you don't, if you're not interested in that and you haven't got your PS4 yet, now you can. And from what I've heard as far as rumors go, they've told all of the game companies that from now on you're making a, a game that can work on either system. So it's not if you don't get the souped-up version of the PS4, you're not going to miss out on any games. This is just them going... Here's a system, it's going to make your PlayStation run even better, the graphics are going to look even better, and it can run this VR thing if, if you're interested in that too. Or, if you haven't jumped on this next gen because you thought the prices were too high, we're, we're doing the opposite of what we did with the PS3 with the $600 price point, and now it's super dirt cheap. Have fun. Join in. I don't know that then, it's going to be dirt cheap. I think you might get down to like 299 like the Xbox One's. Uh, no, I would I would not be surprised if they if they knock that price down quite considerably at least for that holiday season. Because again, they're they're winning this generation, so they could they could just stomp all over Microsoft if they came out and said from September to the end of the year regular PS4 is 200 or 250. And then here's your new souped up one too, which everyone they're hoping a lot of the people that own PS4s would go up there. And now they're selling twice as many PS4s. And yeah, that's pretty bold there. I honestly thought about? it'd be coming out sooner. I'd like I I I kind of want them to just go on on their E3 press conference. Go, it's out now. If you want to go out, go out and get one? Go ahead. And do the price cut then and there for our old PS4s, but because imagine like how much or how much of a shock that would be, and, and them going like, also everyone in the press conference room right now, you got a, P, a PS4 under your truck or under your chair, you know. I'd be really mad because I was planning on going to E3 and then decided against it. Well, that's what they did a few years ago with the PS3, didn't they? That was uh, the first. That was the launch editions of the Xbox One. They did that. Yeah. Um, oh, no, no. That was the three... Okay. It was the, the 360, 360 Elite. Elite. Yeah. Yeah, because it was the year... I went in 2009. I almost went the next year. And I, at the last minute, I was like, oh, man, I can't... I cannot spend everything I got to go again. And then they go, oh, yeah, under every seat, there's an Xbox Elite. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Really? <laughs> like, I, 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 could, can, yeah. I can almost beat that. When I bought my laptop a few years ago, they were doing that, ex, like, buy a laptop or buy a computer, get a free Xbox 360 if you have an EDU coupon, uh, email address. So I scanned one and got one, and it was great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, the, the big surprise will be the Nintendo direct thing will just be Zelda for a half hour and then they go, are you still with us? Oh yeah, by the way, the NX is out now. <sighs> you still don't know what it is, but it's out. Talk, talk about, like, just Just like the Sega Saturn. Their, yeah, <laughs> kill their business right there. Uh, once again, it has been reiterated that it is a new way to play games, which doesn't really tell you anything. It's just not 
a direct Wii U successor or a direct 3DS successor it still doesn't tell you, you, pl- you if play, it's not both. You play all the games with the Samba de Amigo uh, Maracas. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. That would be some... What if, Wouldn't that be just the move controllers at that point? Yeah, but they don't rattle. Oh. Yeah, you gotta have the rattling. Uh, certainly. So... And speaking of Nintendo, though, they are – we've talked about this a bunch on uh, 4PC. I think I've asked the question about two or three different times. And now we have proof from uh, Nintendo president Tatsumi Kimishima that they are looking into Nintendo movies. But they do not want to do live action because they know Mario sucked. They want to do animated Nintendo movies, and they want to try to do as much in-house as they can. Uh, with obviously Mario, Legend of Zelda, and I guess they would add on to the gazillion Pokemon uh, animated ones that are out there. But I think they were looking more in anime form uh, for these, which we don't see of as far as Mario or Zelda. So it would be kind of cool to see them in that form. What do you think? Uh, Randy, do you think this is going to be happening? Uh, maybe, maybe that's what the NX is. It's a, it's a movie player, and then they're waiting <laughs> to make all that. I mean, who knows what the NX is? It's, but uh, as far as the movie stuff goes, I, I think they've learned their lesson, and they're afraid to go back down that path. Uh, we're still seeing terrible video game movies come out that you know just don't understand the medium. Um, like a so Assassin's I'm, Creed. I was about to go in there where what. <laughs> What they say, 35% of the movie is going to be inside the Animus, so it's basically the, the shitty part of Assassin's Creed, that's our movie. Yeah, or basically uh, what Avatar, say. where they have the basically the Animus thing, too. It's just like, why? Wait, why? We're not, don't, we don't need to bring up Fern Gully live-action movie. It's, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> I fell asleep watching that. <laughs> But I can see it. I mean, it kind of depends on what exactly they're going to go for. Are they are they looking for, you know, just longer versions of the Super Mario show, or are they looking more towards trying to come up with a company that's like DreamWorks and and Pixar and and get all cute and cuddly and and you know find a way to like the way Pixar was able to or was it was it DreamWorks or Pixar that did Wreck It Ralph? Uh, Pixar. Pixar, yeah. Pixar, so something like that where they can put all the Nintendo characters together in one giant movie, I think that would sell like complete hotcakes and everyone would, would go to it if something Wreck It Ralph had all Nintendo characters. And I mean, you see what amiibos do. I mean, I own a bunch of amiibos, I've, I think I've connected two to my, my Wii U. It's just they're cool to have up there, and I'm a Nintendo fan. So to have a movie like, based uh, the on amiibos that, have really slowed down as far as you don't hear people talking about them as much well welcome to the um plastic uh model crash of 2016 uh video games did it in the 80s and now these things are are crashing because how many of them came out after like skylanders was the big thing and then disney had to have theirs before that finally got canceled and Nintendo had to have theirs, and you go to Walmart, and it, it takes up th- three sections now of just figures, yeah, of all these different things. So that's why like, I must be so happy because they used to take up an entire aisle. Yeah, that's... so it's I, they've completely washed out the market, and now everything will just kind of crash and and move on. It's it's the um, plastic. Um, Guitar. Plastic musical yeah. instruments in Beanie Baby form. What do you think? Uh, I mean, uh, there was revealed that Disney Infinity was supposed to go Rogue One and even 12-inch figures at one point. 12-inch would have been cool. Yeah, I mean, it would have been cool. Like I said, I only have my uh, Jack Skellings. Like, like as long as it was, like, posable and you could actually use it as a figure. Because you can't use those figures as figures, you know? They just stand there. Like, if it was, like, an action toy or action figure, that would have been cool. 
Yeah, but it also would have meant they're probably more expensive than thirteen dollars too. Yeah. yeah, but look at that mega yarn Yoshi. That's like thirty bucks, forty bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That thing is uh, friggin' huge, but you could also use it as a plushie, I guess. The problem with Nintendo trying to make movies based on their characters or stories, it's like their characters aren't that deep. Like most of their most of those characters still, still don't even talk. Like, what is what is Link's personality? Uh, well, we saw his personality in his his Panasonic games. Yeah. Bring, bring, <laughs> Bring back Captain N in the video game Masters and just do a comic, do a TV show on that or movie on that. Yeah, I mean, I think Mario makes the most sense. Uh, I still think and, Samus does. It's Metroid. Yeah, Metroid yeah. would be great. I think Metroid. If that's for something you can go a little bit more uh, mature, I guess, or serious. Remember that Netflix Netflix Legend of Zelda show they were kicking around a year ago? Oh yeah, it was supposed to be the that, uh, that came to fruition, didn't it? Right, the the more the less adult version of Game of Thrones. That's what that was, yeah. Cause, so instead of instead of naked boobs, you see naked Zoras running around. <laughs> God, that would uh, don't think that would fly too well, but. Hey, I guess whatever works. Hey, you know, in Japan, that's really not that big a deal. But then you have to censor it for this market, and it doesn't. Uh, then, then internet fanboys go crazy. Oh yeah, that's right. You know, because they they need to see the fifteen year old and bravely default have a bikini on. Just, I don't understand sometimes. Uh, well, there were. Uh, Two uh, collections that one of them we know for sure is happening, and another one that I said made sense when we heard about it at E3, the third game. I said they've got to come out with the first and second game. Uh, almost a year later, we have finally heard from Sega that they are investigating how they could do Shenmue 1 and 2 HD Remaster. Uh, but there was licensing things that they got to deal with because, you know, they had a Coca-Cola uh, uh, licensing uh, in the game. And they have to make sure that, obviously, the gameplay and all that stuff would work uh, on the consoles really well. Um, and then also we found out that there's going to be a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3 package for 360 and PS3. Uh, that's after Black Ops 1 has been revealed as backwards compatible for the Xbox One. Do you, uh, are you interested in this? Uh, and then this is also with the Modern Warfare 1 remaster being out there. Uh, if you buy the Infinite Warfare uh, $80 edition, do you think this is smart to come out with this last gen version when you're trying to get people to buy the remaster of Modern Warfare? And is the Shenmue HD 1 and 2 going to happen? Randy, what do you think? Uh, with the Call of Duty thing, it, it makes no sense to come out with a system on last gen anymore. I mean, Microsoft has already shut the door on the 360. Uh, to put it on the Xbox One, yeah, sure. Or, or PS4. I mean, I actually enjoyed the Modern Warfare games. I mean, that was before you know I completely got burnt out. Like Then they be, started becoming the same, which is still funny to me that you know, for years, all we begged was that a first-person shooter wasn't set in World War One or Two. No, like, it's just, the just stop it. And then all of a sudden, it's like, please go back to World War One. It's like, just we're done with this. We don't. Uh, we're, you've you've now overdone it. So thank you, Battlefield, for going back. So, but I like the Modern Warfare games. The stories were over the top and goofy, and I enjoyed them. And and the multiplayer was. Okay, but the thing that has me most interested is the remasters of Shenmue. Uh, I've never played the Shenmue games, so I will would have no interest in playing this this third one that they're working on until I play the first two. So you're you're better off for it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and I think a lot of people are in that same boat. So Sega is better off for it to come out with it because I think the sales of three will improve if they come out with this and say like. A year earlier, 
going, okay, here's Shenmue 1 and 2, and a year from today, Shenmue 3 comes out. No, no, so, you, mis- you misunderstood. I meant you're better off for not playing those games. Oh, not playing them? <laughs> I played both of them, and they're just not... They are so ponderous and slow that if uh, you tried to play them now, you'd, you'd play them for a half hour and just go like, no. It's, think of... Uh... Damn it, what's that game? I can't think of it right now. Uh, Frickin' Square Enix. Uh, it's pretty much like Shenmue, except it's better. The bouncer? Same sort of idea. <laughs> no, say, the damn... It, uh, the, it's Asia, it has the You're Asians. Thinking sleeping so, Dogs. Yes, pretty much like oh, a okay. really slow version of Sleeping Dogs. No, no, it's completely different. Like, Well, shit. but... Shenmue Let's... is like uh, Forklift Simulator 1999. <laughs> but, like, isn't it like open world somewhat? But it was like oh, yeah. one of the first ones to ever oh, do that? I mean, it's open world for sure, but the fighting engine is a bunch of cute quick time events. Yeah. Uh, you have to, like, it, it's, like a, it's like a Japanese version of The Sims, essentially. You have to worry about, like, your rent. Uh, staying healthy or staying fed, stuff like that. But you have to work at a job for, you know, six hours of the day or something. Or you can kind of get by it. They cheat a little, but it's still just so ponderous and slow. Do you think maybe they would uh, turn them into remasters? Then oh, yeah, because the, yeah. In, a year from, in a year from now, when the Shenmue 3 money rolls out to go... And here's a new Kickstarter, Kickstarter reward tier is Shenmue 1 and 2 remastered. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if they change it a little bit, maybe. Uh, Instead of Coca-Cola, it'll be Roca-Cola. And it'll, go, it'll be like, it'll just go from there. <laughs> uh, I think uh, for the Xbox, they're basically making these and then Microsoft and Quick Order is going to announce that they're backwards compatible. The Modern Warfare's. Uh, uh, did they announce a price for that? Thirty bucks. Yeah, that's that's not a bad price, I would say. I mean, no. they probably have they probably still have boxes and thousands of copies of those games lying in a warehouse. So package them all together and just shove them out the door. Yeah, you because know, GameStop still charges a ni- a hefty price for those. Well, uh, even Steam, like I. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the first one, is still 20 bucks on Steam. And it's like, you guys are crazy. Yeah, even when they put them on sale on the uh, Xbox 360, I think it's, it's like $9. It's usually like $10. Yeah. And it's like, okay, why? These games are how old now? Well, it's because Call of Duty is a lot like all of the main Nintendo franchises. What do you mean Mario Kart has been out for 10 years? Pay $60 still. Yeah, try finding a copy of Smash Brothers Melee for under 60 bucks. Oh, well, see, the thing is, the, I can kind of understand Nintendo, though, because they're a lot of their classic franchises, they're timeless, so... Well, they also come out once per console generation, yeah. not every year. <laughs> yeah, except for Pokemon. But uh, other than that, which... Those things also, I don't know why they don't let them go down in price because they do come out with so many of them now. But, uh, I mean, that's just one out of all the other ones. There's no ins- If they let it go down in price, there's no incentive for you to get the new one. Yeah, there is. There's so many people that, how many, what, 1.5 million people bought the the first three? Did no, no. Really? Like, if a kid walks into a store and sees the old Pokemon game for twenty bucks and the new one for forty, instead of now where it's, they're both still forty, he's going to get the old one. Oh, you mean the parent? Because the kid yeah. is just going to want the newest thing. They don't, they don't care about uh, having the other one if the new one's out. But uh, yeah, I can kind of see what you're saying there. And, and listen, if there's any kids listening to this and they want to know which Pokemon to get. Get yourself red and blue. It's the same game as the ones you're going to play, and there's far less Pokemon to memorize. <laughs> Just go get a copy of uh, Jade Cocoon in the PS1. That's the best Pokemon game there is. There you go. 
Yeah, Wes also did that game in one of the early. Didn't he? Which or game? Was it the second one. He did, didn't he? Jay, Jay Cocoon? Or am I Jay thinking Cocoon. of something else? He did Crash Bandicoot. Jay Cocoon? What is that? That it's might a, have been. I it's, conf- a, it's an RPG on PS1 that's like Pokemon. It's anime Pokemon. Or, you know. I don't think he's played that. I'm probably thinking of something, some other one. I think the PS1. only PS1 RPGs that he's done for the podcast is Wild Arms and the Suikoden series. That's a good series. <laughs> Which, uh, Wild Arms 3 will be... Wild Arms 3 and Connecticut will be the next two. I don't know why anybody's asking for Connecticut, but uh, the next two PS2 on PS4 games. So... I, if you, uh, Wild Arms 3, definitely, I think uh, you'll need to go check that out for the $15. Um, Connecticut, I actually, that was my first ever PS2 game. So, <laughs> still kind of funny that somebody asked to put that on the PS4. But, but I question how that how that uh, system works. Like, who suggests those games or how they, how they acquire them? I think right now they're making sure that it's nothing that's on PS3. That's a PS2 classic. Uh, so that there's a justifiable reason, uh, except for I think Parappa might be the only one. What about Bully? Oh, and Bully, yeah. But Bully, but those are because, uh, you know, Rockstar are just whores for themselves, and yeah. they will come out with a zillion versions of GTA and whatever, if because people will buy them. It's amazing to me. I want to know how many people have, like, two or three different copies of those GTA games. Like... They probably do, just just to have them, I guess, because they're pretty much on everything now. So uh, that being said, uh, I know there's a Dragon Ball Xenoverse two coming out and Yokai Watch two, which they're already on like the fourth one is being made right now in Japan, uh, as far as Yokai Watch goes. So. Um, I know you like these Dragon Ball games, Mark. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> I mean, what? Xenoverse actually wasn't that bad just on it by itself, but it's just like, eh. The online stuff did not work in that game at all. <laughs> and you know they're going to double down on this one instead of just making a good fighting game. Are you surprised at all, Randy, that Microsoft has canceled Project Spark? No, I, I, I mean... It was one of those things that was such a huge deal that it's going to change the, the the gaming industry. No, it's not. It was their version. Of, I mean, to me, it was their version of Little Big Planet. Of hey, you can come create stuff for us and. I got paid. And, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I, I honestly, I'd never seen anyone really do much with it. I never played it, um, but I think. Something like Project Spark or like Little Big Planet would have worked so much better. We have this whole Twitch community, we have this whole Let's Play community. If if one of those communities would get into it, kind of like what they did with uh, Mario Maker, where you're seeing Mario Maker levels get played by these famous YouTubers, and I think that's what kind of would sell the games. If a Project Spark had some games or stuff that uh, communities had have created and like a Markiplier played it, I, I think that would really have helped a Project Spark. But these kind of games, for whatever reason, have never really been taken off by those communities and those is what would help really drive the sales. What, Conquer doesn't do it for you? <laughs> Go back to, what, episode three or four of the podcast and find out what I think of the Conquer game. Oh God, he hated that. Conquer 64 game. The it's, ama- day. it's amazing that that's one of the rarest games in the N64 now. It's like, you people are crazy. I know. God, that game and was And I own it, and it cost me a lot. There are two games that I have paid way too much money for that I really hate myself for buying. Conquer is one of them, and Earthbound is the other. Not because I think Earthbound's a terrible game. Earthbound's a fine game. Not two hundred and fifty dollars. Good. Oh, Do you have geez. a copy of uh, Suikoden Two? No. Okay. Yet. I have I have the first one, but I don't own the second one in a physical form. I own it. Yeah. 
digitally, yeah. Why didn't you say it costs like like six hundred dollars or something? No, like no, that uh, it's about one forty used. Yeah. yeah, but there's a local store by my house that has a new copy of it for nine hundred dollars. Jesus. My or six hundred. I think it might be six hundred dollars. I'm not sure, but I'm like, good luck selling that. You'll need it. Uh, speaking of local stores, uh, the local gaming store where I live has a, a joke copy of Shaq Fu that they have listed at five thousand dollars. <laughs> like they, they never intend to sell it, but they just find it the funniest thing ever. See, one of the local stores on my house, I talked about it last week, had a, the sixty-four disc drive for a thousand dollars, which was cool. They used to have a Panasonic Q there for six hundred dollars, but they actually sold it, hmm. and they had a. Uh, PSX for two hundred dollars, which is sold also. That's the. That's, that's the PS with the with the uh, DVR in it. Oh wow! For, that's the one with the screen. Right? No, no, it only came out, oh. came out in Japan. It's okay. literally a PS2 with like a hard drive in it, and you can like hook up to your TV and it'll record stuff. You know, it's a DVR. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, and quality was not great. On wait, that, did, the, did that so, Panas- did that Panasonic Q actually play anything? It's a GameCube with it. The Panasonic Q is a GameCube. It's a really cool looking GameCube that has like a Chrome uh, cover on it, but it plays full size discs. It has a tray, oh. not like not a flip top, but it can play DVDs. Oh, okay. I remember that they came out with the GameCube that could play DVDs. Yeah, so the thing is uh. awesome looking. And I really want one. <laughs> I mean, there's so many things I can play DVDs now. <laughs> you need it no, for that. It, I mean, but... it's just like a set of symbol, like my two D bug systems. Like, I, like they're not, right, yeah. you know. I like them because it's because they're special. But to most people, they're like whatever. It's a blue PS One. <laughs> I mean, that's cool that you have those those old Xboxes that you can play Netflix on. That's yeah. <laughs> so. uh I think uh, we didn't. I forgot to talk about this when we did the football podcast, Randy. But uh, how cursed is Rob Gronkowski going to be? I'm so excited. On? I can't wait for the Patriots to fall to the curse of Madden. But I'm disappointed because <laughs> I usually buy Madden every three years or so. Just I mean, I I'm a sucker. I buy baseball every single year. And that, that's my game. I, I have the sixty dollar franchise fee. Basically, I'll buy baseball every year. The other sports games are on a, like a two to three year loop, and I plan to to buy Madden because I have a, a bunch of guys at work that, you know, play Madden every year, and I'm like, all right, this year I'm going to get Madden, and then they put Gronkowski on the cover, and now I'm I'm questioning whether I want a Patriot <laughs> on my shelf. Um, but yeah, I'm happy he's going to get cursed. You can get it digitally, and then you don't have to look at it. No, oh, I'm a collector. I can't do it. I can't get myself to do that. <laughs> Too bad there's not another Blitz the League game coming out because that series was awesome. Don't get me started on how we should have one of those again, but uh, sadly, we don't. Uh, I I heard uh, 16 was really good, so hopefully... I haven't played a Madden game, I think, since... I want to say, like, 14 or 13, maybe, so... Who knows? They they could be good. Whatever the year it was, I think it was well, fourteen. You just watched last... it. Go ahead. You just watched the EA press conference at E three, and and they'll tell you all about Madden and the yeah. ninety other sports games that they'll do. That'll that'll so. be half the press conference. They'll have Pele come out again. It'll be Truck yeah. Stick two point oh. Oh God! Never heard that was a thing. Oh, I can press the right stick and hit someone hard. We just thought that was like the Why greatest did... thing ever. I want Madden to come back with a QB vision and then so I can put Johnny Menzel back on the field and watch his QB vision just wiggle because he's drunk. <laughs> oh, would they fit that in the game? <laughs> That's a thought. Uh, Dark Souls 3 is the best-selling game of April 2016. Uh, this is, of course, retail only because MPD has still not figured out how to do digital sales at this point. I don't know why it's taking them so long. Uh, it's Dark Souls, Ratchet and Clank, 2016, MLB 16, the show, The Division, 
uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, all that's yeah. PS4. <laughs> um, Did you Mine- see that? Uh, oh, go on. Minecraft, still for the Xbox One. Quantum Break, Call of Duty Black Ops Three, uh, NBA 2K16, still selling, and Star Fox Zero winds up the the list. Did you see that Pokemon tournament beat out Street Fighter Five in overall sales? For physical? Yes, I did. If uh, they were rated on a skew basis, both the Bravely Second game and layer and Pokemon tournament would be on this list at 9 and 10. So. Go, go, Capcom. Yeah, and speaking of, Capcom has now figured out, it took them this long, they have now figured out that they are going to finish games before releasing them. Uh, so they say. We are going to make sure we carry out development in a way that prioritizes completeness over firm development deadlines. What? Wait, you couldn't have figured that out before releasing Street Fighter Five? I mean, well, look at like what they did with Azure's Wrath. Like, like essentially, the game ending was DLC. You had to pay for it to watch it. <sighs> Capcom. But no one... I mean, Capcom is making dumb decisions to be sure, but at least they're still in the game, unlike Konami. Well, Konami is not wrong. They made a buttload of money on their mobile games so mm-hmm. you know they, they weren't stupid by doing it even though we did find out before we started the podcast that Resident Evil 7 is in development and we're going to find out more at E3 apparently um, so please don't and, yeah <laughs> I, exactly I'm with Mark I grew up in a time where Resident Evil was cool it went away a long time ago stop trying I, like as as good as I, I actually do like Resident Evil Four, but that game completely fucked up that franchise. Yes, I totally agree. I t- totally agree. Resident Evil Four is great on its own, but it started something that I don't want to talk about. They turned it into a uh, co op shooter, which re- like without horror. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and you already have co op shooters out there. Yep, I I, I miss the days. I, I hate to say it. I miss the days of tank controls. I miss the days of very little ammunition and having to fight the controls to get around zombies. And and it, I just miss that. I mean, give me that. I mean, they showed that they could still do it with the remake of Resident Evil. And I've heard that they are remaking Resident Evil 2, yep. which has me partially excited because that is my favorite Resident Evil game. Um I have beaten that game in one sitting four times because that's what I did as a kid. Just one summer, me and my friends would have competitions. I mean, before speedrunning was a thing on the internet, that was my speedrunning game. Um, So I'm excited about it, but I don't want them to turn Resident Evil 2 Remake into what Resident Evil 6 was. Well, did you play the Resident Evil 1 Remake that just came out on Steam and PS4 and everything? I played it back on GameCube. the GameCube. Yeah, and, that was a and fine then, remake. Absolutely. Absolutely loved it. And then Wes played it for the podcast on October. And he's not a Resident Evil guy, but he enjoyed it too. That's the Resident Evil I miss. And that what's there was like a side mission in 5, right? Well, there's four characters. Side story? Four campaigns, but... What which... am I thinking of? There was one where you're in a mansion... That's uh, Chris's campaign, I think. Yeah, maybe. I have to look this up. But there was one where it was like a, a side story in like Resident Evil 5, not 6, but in 5, where it was like, this is the Resident Evil I remember. This is what I want. Give this to me. Get rid of all the other crap. If they can go back to their roots, I'm in it. But it's Capcom, <laughs> so I'm worried. Yeah, it's called Lost in Nightmares for Resident Evil 5. Yes, that one. That was enjoyable. There was not enough of it, but it was enjoyable. And that's that's the Resident Evil I want. Yeah, so, uh, I, I mean, I'm not a huge Resident Evil person, so I can't... The first four it. are good. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Like Resident Evil 1 through 3 and Code Veronica. Yeah. And Sorry. RE4 is fine, but just not a Resident Evil game. Yeah, I need a... 
uh, one of these days uh, or one of these times on the podcast, uh, Code Veronica will find its way on there because I remember as a kid, I got to the fight with Tyrant on the airplane and I couldn't ever beat him and it drove me nuts. So I gave up and I need to go back and finish it because I have that whole section in Antarctica still to play. But I've I, beaten all of them other than that one and six. I can beat that. There are two metal gates you have to go through in that game. We have to drop off all your metal crap to go through them and pick it up. I left my fire extinguisher in it, one, like one of the boxes. I turned out I needed it about four hours later when a fight, fire broke out. I had to put it out, and I had no extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to restart the game. Oh, man, that sucks. But that's what we did. That's what you did when you played games back then. Yeah, when you, you were kids, you didn't mistake. have the money to keep buying another game. If you, you know. Yeah, so you played them over and over, and you're like, well, i got to start over. And, and nowadays, it would, you would make a mistake like that and go, screw it, I'm playing something else. Yep. Or just load up Cheat Engine. <laughs> yes, you can do that. <laughs> back then, when we were kids, we could not do that either. Oh, I, had a game, I had a Dreamcast Game Shark. Ah, well, yeah. So, see, yeah. I was never into having the Game Shark. Or I got, I, currently, I have three PS2 code breakers. Because it's the perfect Wait. way to mod a PS, PS2. Why three of them? In case one of them breaks. Oh, fair <laughs> enough, I guess. So, uh, you know, we talked, I think it was last week or the week before, how... This whole thing with Dark Souls being gone would not last. Well, if there's anything to show you how crazy these people are for Dark Souls, a Dark Souls board game was funded in, on Kickstarter in three minutes. $70,832 funded uh, for uh, this board game. It is now over $5 million in funding uh, about two weeks ago. If they make it to five million seven hundred sixty thousand, uh, they'll unlock the final stretch goal, and there will also be a scenario-driven campaign mode uh, with level of success continues from one game to another uh, for this board game. I hope uh, it's just a reskin of the Tool Time board game from Home Improvement. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, I come up with a great joke in my head, and Mark just blows it out of the water before I can even say it. That's good. Wait, what was your joke? Well, I was just going to say that I, I wanted Dark Souls to just be Monopoly, but the prices are quadrupled, so it's really hard. No, you, actually have to, you, actually, you actually have to sacrifice your soul to buy anything in the game. <laughs> I was like, if you can get around this board once, you're a pretty good gamer. I just... Uh... I know the uh, when when there was a WoW board game, that thing was going for a while. Well, it's uh, like all the stupid Monopoly variants that are out now. It's like, right, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and the people, they got mad because uh, Ray was not in the Monopoly, so they had to remake it. That's justifiable, though. Yeah. Because Yoda is in that game, but Ray is not. And it's like, which of these characters are in this goddamn movie? Right, yeah. Yoda's not even in the movie. We're going to put him in here, but whatever. Uh, I mean, shows you how much people really love Dark Souls. So I really think that that whole deal with uh, him not making Dark Souls games, that's going to expire pretty quick. Uh, especially when From Software figures out that they really don't have a large list of games to go back to. Uh, I'm sure someone some someone will like scan every inch of the board and go like, Oh, if you look at these four clues, it points to dark souls four coming out in 2019. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's going to happen. I mean, or they can just go make another enchanted arms game or something. Just, that's what the, the world has been waiting for. Uh, so for some reason, not only are we getting a Tetris movie that has nothing to do with Tetris. Uh, we are getting a missile command movie. And a centipede movie. Why? All starring Adam Sandler. <laughs> Finally, the epic story of Tetris can be told. The sci-fi thriller that is Tetris 
that's not at all what you think, but it will be a cool surprise. Uh, of the three, Missile Command kind of makes sense, because it's just, you know, alien invasion, or, you know, the Russians are invading, or whatever. Centipede is dumb, and Tetris is insane. What are you going to do, a Men in Black Centipede or something? I just... Uh... I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're doing with that. It's like, why not just make a movie based on Qbert? <laughs> well, they did. He was in that picture. Yeah, movie. I know, but no. But a that whole movie, movie never, of it. Movie that movie never counts for anything. <laughs> whole movie of Qbert going up and down the, the thing, <laughs> and getting disappointed. <laughs> I, I think the Tetris movie is just going to be the Russian government going in and going, "What did, what did you create? This great game of Tetris." It's ours now. We collect all the money. Go away. That's it. And then the movie's over. Uh, the Tetris movie will feature a Chinese cast uh, because okay. it is being filmed in China. Um, the goal is to make a world... Oh, that, never mind. They're talking about the, the China thing. Uh, the Tetris movie doesn't need sandwich into a deal because it naturally fits. Whatever that means. Uh... You know, whatever. I'm sure there'll be somebody playing Tetris in the movie, and then you'll get your Tetris uh, little tie in there. But whatever. I mean, they were talking about doing a Joust movie about ten years ago. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Like these movies are not going to come out. Let's be honest. Well, I mean, uh, it's, even then, uh, you know, they're they're thinking of making that Space Jam two movie, and the original. Uh, director of Space Jam 1 says so Space Jam 2 is doomed. Uh, Michael Jordan was the biggest star on the planet that uh, Stephen Curry has already replaced LeBron James as the biggest uh, basketball star. And by the time this comes out, they will be even bigger. Um, do you think that that's true, Randy? That Space Jam 2 would be doomed because LeBron won't be his biggest star in two years. No, and, and listen, like Space Jam, I don't, I mean, Michael Jordan was a fun part of it or whatever, but it, obviously it it worked because of, it was Looney Tunes and it was goofy and, and they had fun with it. It wasn't just Michael Jordan in that movie, they had a bunch of different... But who the know, hell watches Looney Tunes today? Well, they don't have to use Looney Tunes. I mean, they could add different stuff into it and, and try to make it more modern and, and goofy and... And listen, if if they really wanted to, they could make Stephen Curry the bad guy in the movie and really just and and play up that. They could do it whatever they wanted. Is it doomed? No. Is it going to be as good as the first one? No. Um, but I'll probably go see it anyways, just because I'm a kid at heart. And it'll be a, a goofy movie, but to say it's doomed is a little overstatement. I'm sure if he was directing it, he wouldn't say that. <laughs> Like, what has this guy done except for that movie? Let's be honest. Probably not. Uh, hardly anything. Uh, See, it's not Doom because LeBron James is going to be in it. It's Doom because it's going to be a Space Jam movie. Now, if he was, if he was going to do Roger Rabbit 2, that'd be, I'd be all on board. <laughs> uh, if they do the Looney Tunes, that's going to be a hard sell, I think, uh, for the kids. Yeah, yeah, but look, look, oh. look when Space Jam came out, it's not, it's not like the Looney Tunes were big then either. Yeah, but they were on. Like, I remember watching them as a kid, seeing them all the time. I do not ever come across, and this is somebody that watches Boomerang from time to time, I do not come across them at all. You Instead know, of the Looney Tunes, it should be the Tiny Tunes in that movie. Man, that would be awesome. I love the Tiny Tunes when I was a kid. Or like Pinky in the Brain. That would be even better. Uh, oh, it looks like we lost Randy here. We'll probably get him back. Um, so you, I think you watch this, don't you? Uh, they, they have moved Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. back another hour again uh, to 10 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, and their reasoning is they're going to be edgier uh, and darker now, being at 10 o'clock. 
Okay. <laughs> Do you think uh, that that will get them better ratings? Because it'll be more adult. Uh, maybe the problem. Well, I think the big problem with Agents of Shield right now it's kind of com- it's kind of competing with the Flash. And between those shows, one of them is good, one of them is not, and you can decide which one that is. <laughs> Like I just yeah. watched the I just watched the Agents of Shield finale today tonight, and I was just like, "What is going on?" <laughs> ah, well, uh, Randy's internet crashed, so that probably means we won't. Yeah, unless his computer gets it fixed in about five minutes or so, we probably won't get him back for the end of this. Uh, so Harley Quinn is going to have her own movie, but it won't be just her. Uh, there's going to be possibly Batgirl and Birds of Prey in the movie. So it'll be more like a all-female uh, DC movie. Do you think that they should have just done one of them as a movie, or do you think this works better as having uh, several? They should have just, just done one, but Harley Quinn is not the end-all character. Like... She is very grating for long periods of time. Uh, you need her to bounce off someone, obviously. But like DC keeps wanting to like just jump to the team movie without doing any of the legwork of introducing these characters. Like, look at Suicide Squad. I mean, that movie looks fun, but it's going to be a disaster trying to keep track of everyone in those in that movie. Like Harley Quinn and. Deadshot are the main characters, obviously, because you know they're the actors. You know, you know who the hell they are, but that's about it. I think people know who Jared Leto is. Oh yeah, but he's not. He's. I assume he's the villain, or he's not like if they because they have Killer Croc in the movie. It was Will Smith in the Killer Croc makeup. You wouldn't know who the fuck that was at all. Right. Um. Yeah, and it is a little bit of a different looking Joker, so uh, I can see where some people may not even see him in that, uh, which I mean means you're doing your job as the actor. But uh, you know, I'm hoping that that works out. I, again, I'm not very familiar uh, outside of the main, you know, big uh, people in the DC universe. I'm not uh, very familiar with all the side characters or whatever. I was always a big Marvel guy, so Suicide Squad is going to be fun just to watch from that perspective of coming in as an outsider to that and seeing if I really enjoy the movie or not. I mean, they have a lot to go through with how Batman and Superman got panned, and if this movie gets panned too, yikes. I mean, this movie at least looks like it has a sense of humor and isn't as brute, like dark and brooding uh, as that other movie is. But I still think it's going to be kind of a messy movie. Yeah, I, w- I would agree. Um, it- it's going to be one of these uh, weird things where will it all work the way they want it to? And then to have this movie where, okay, I get it. There's a lot of Harley Quinn fans. Uh, she is a capable actress herself, but you're going to add in these people and it's, it's kind of like, okay. What do you think, think about about this, Randy? You have a Harley Quinn movie, but it's also going to include Batgirl and possibly other female DC characters. I'm okay with it. I mean, that's what most of these comic book movies have turned into. It's It's based around one character, but you have many other comic book heroes and villains added into it. I mean, I haven't been able to go see it yet, but this new Captain America movie to me is just Avengers 2.5 because there were so many other heroes in it. So it's nice to see that Harley Quinn's going to get her own movie and she's going to be the main star, but it doesn't surprise me that she's not going to be the only hero in it. The biggest problem is DC is still not doing a movie based on their biggest character ever, and that character is Detective Chimp. Well, you know, we're waiting to see if they can even get Superman right. 
So, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, Ben Affleck doesn't mess up Batman, then they're really screwed. I mean, the Batman with eight, with eighty different villains in it. Oh God! Did you hear about that, Randy? Like Ben uh, Affleck wants to put every freaking Batman villain he possibly can in the his first Batman film. And just walk through them each, or just have a, a gauntlet. <laughs> I don't know. Does that make any sense to you? Like, Welcome to the Batman Bat or Batman Royal Rumble. Batman enters first, and then we're just gonna have all of the <laughs> the villains come in. Are, are we gonna have a movie version of like Batman Arkham Asylum or something? We're just gonna. Well, I mean, I, I made the joke last time that uh, the the last villain, or the biggest bad guy in the movie, should be the Condiment King. <laughs> do you think uh, Aids of Shield moving to 10 o'clock and being darker and edgier is going to make the show better Randy I don't know I haven't seen it Yeah. hold on I'm going to mute my mic and ask the girlfriend she watches this show and then I'll get back to you so Mark you answer it and then I'll have her answer well the, the other answer is it honestly could not could not could not hurt the show any worse <laughs> like I guess if you're going to go with that thought of, okay, well, it worked for, you know, Civil War, why not try this? Uh, I get what they're doing. They want to have a comedy block at the beginning, and then you get serious, which a lot of the networks do. Um, so if, maybe it could work. If they really wanted to care about that, they'd move it to, they'd move it to Netflix and just have Daisy be naked for, like, half the show. And at least, <laughs> at least people would watch it then. It's not going to happen. But uh, she says it could help. In, in more words than that, but she said it could help. <laughs> I can't hurt. I, yeah, I, yeah. It, it, it would make sense for them to try to get more serious, see what you can do, and um, they said that they're apparently constantly talking to Marvel about uh, other projects, so. Well, that other that other uh, agent of Shield spin out just got canned. So, yeah, well, I mean, we'll see if they even do anything else uh, with that at all. You know, and they cancel Agent Carter so she can do another show. Uh, so, uh, whatever. But all right, uh, we'll get to games that came out uh, in this week and next week because it's not guaranteed we'll be doing a show on a Tuesday. Um, I know you're excited for this Fallout 4 Far Harbor that comes out tomorrow. Sure. Uh, it already got leaked. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, not surprised that that happened at all. Uh, if you had never played Valkyria Chronicles Remastered, go buy that on the PS4. It's 30 bucks. It's well worth your time. It is one of the best strategy games out there, period. Uh, have you played that, Randy? No, I have not. Well, you need to add that to the backlog. Uh, <laughs> the backlog is long. <laughs> that, that'll, yeah, that'll be spot 1,453. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Homefront Revolution, which apparently is it bad, Mark? Have you seen the if the reviews have been bad to this yet? I... It's been about the same. It's been just very middling and kind of boring. It's not, as, it's not as bad as the first one, but that's not exactly faint praise. So, uh, Mark, I mean, you can answer it better than Wes and I did. Wes and I did it on our last podcast in our player and A section. From this, the videos that I have watched on this game, it, was it fair to say this looks like a generic division? Yes, except first person and dumb. Works for me. Because you, you still have like the remote control bomb stuff, and it's like... You know, the Division, you can say a lot of it doesn't make sense, but at least a lot of it is kind of realistic. But having North Korea be the most power, technologically powerful nation in the world, it's like, no. Those people are lucky if they have phones. Right. Uh, this uh, Shadow of the Beast remake apparently is not too bad. So, if you're at PS4... And you want to get that. There you go. Uh, I know everybody was waiting for a Postal Redux. Oh, I yeah. Freaking, I freaking forgot that that about that game. 
been a long time. Uh, the uh, basically more gruesome version of a GTA, where you just vast things. Well, and at least in GTA, you have a plot. Yeah, at least you do. But that was the point. It's basically like, okay, well, all the fun of GTA just whoop stuff. Okay, this gets old out there, well, but I guess if it doesn't for you, then uh, I know everybody's well, waiting for that Rugby League Live Three, right, Randy? You're just you're dying. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm already ten hours in. Why is why have they not come out with some Australian rules? Uh, I don't know. It's a more fun game. I, I think honestly, because I've thought about it too, and there might be a game somewhere, you know, just maybe just in Australia. But uh, Aussie rules football. It, there's so much going on in it. Like with rugby, it's fine because you just you, you know you you go into the ruck and then you, you pass the ball out, and there's two or three different mechanics you need. Aussie rules football. There's just everything everyone's all over the field so it, i mean i don't know sean i'm sure you play a lot more soccer games than i do but when i play soccer there's a lot of times where i'll just pass it to somebody i didn't want it to and so with all those players in the field it would probably be tough to aim right and, and do that with the, the 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 fast action of of the afl so I just think that there's too much going on for a, a control scheme to, to make sense of it, really. Fair enough. Are you uh, excited about this TMNT game? Or? Yes. Kind of. Like, the videos look good. I just kind of wish you had the, t uh, the TV show cast. Surprised they don't. That's weird. Did they give a reasoning for that or just... Nope. They don't want it to... That's weird. I, I uh, hope that game is good because uh, Transformers was okay from them, but the the Avatar game was not. Well, look what they were working with. Yeah, that's really. true. But, oh, yeah. but not using the Nickelodeon cast is is fine because obviously you have the Nickelodeon version of TMNT right now. You have the Michael Bay version of TMNT right now, and then to have the video or to have this video game series be different as well. It's fine. I mean, kids are going to eat it up. I'm sure my kid is going to eat it up. He likes the turtle game, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure him and I will be playing this a bit. I'm a huge fan of the turtle game, so I hope it is good too. And of course, the game that I know Wes is like foaming at the mouth for it to come out already. Overwatch. Um, you, you mean the the end of the backlog busting project? Yeah, he is Overwatch because he he won't play his games anymore once this fully comes out. <laughs> I don't know. I know I'll check it out. I'm sure. I'm just not a big like playing shooters on PC, so that means I would actually have to like really invest, and I don't know I want to spend sixty dollars on that. What do you think? Uh, I know Mark, you weren't uh, too into this when I asked before. Yeah, I already got Team Fortress 2, so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's that's going to do it for uh, this week's um, <clears throat> video games to the max. Uh, Mark, you did a very interesting Top 8 this week. Yeah, it was Top 8 Russian-developed video games. Man. And one person literally said, why isn't CSGO on here? And I wanted to punch that person in the face. <laughs> Some people, I swear, they don't want to read at all. <laughs> or think, for that matter. Um, Randy, are you doing... Uh, I know you did a top ten uh, not too long ago. Uh, yeah, I did uh, the top ten sequels that you can find on uh, backlogbusting.com. Uh, plan on having one, hopefully out Thursday, but I don't think Wes has put his parts into it for the top 10 consoles. I was going to do top 10 um, Uncharted cutscenes last week, and that project fell apart so fast. It just, I mean, I watched all the cutscenes again, and just trying to pick 10 was impossible, and I gave up. But hopefully Thursday, maybe, uh, that top 10 will come out. Yeah, um, you gonna do a review? Hopefully, or, uh, 
I'm, I'm still getting over a cold and, and this vacation and uh, trying to like fit all this stuff in is not fun. So like, I, I remember mentioning to you is like trying to come up with things that will fit in the schedule and, and just a review right now is just not <laughs> in the cards. But But hopefully I have a few games that I have thought about sitting down and, and really writing out, but I haven't gotten the schedule figured out to where like things will will move smoothly. Fair enough. Uh, I know how you feel doing all this stuff every week. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, how do I fit in time to do anything? <laughs> There's times where I'm just like, okay, brain is going to shut off. I'm going to go do something that I don't do all the time. There. Uh, sometimes you need, uh, one of those days, but, uh, the four PC questions will be going out as soon as I hit end on this podcast, probably. <clears throat> um, and the game's top five will probably be something TMNT related, because I think I've done everything with Blizzard you could possibly do at this point. Top Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, go. <laughs> Number one, Venus to Milo. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, so uh, you know you can check out uh, all of our stuff either somewhere on Four One Mania. Just go into the Formania dot com slash games. It's there. Whether it's uh, you know Mark doing a review or, or any of the guys, even you know ones that are not here. You know Daniel, he organizes the Fat Fiction. Um. You know, you can always read that every week. Uh, you know, I do the game stuff out on the 4th PC and get these guys in here to write answers. And then I, you know, give these arbitrary points. And, yeah, you know, just check it out. And of course, it helps us with the podcast as well. So we'll be back next week at some point. Enjoy your games, and we'll see you later. Later. All right.